Hey, I'm Steve and uh, I'm a CRT hoarder. And naturally as a CRT hoarder, I have a storage unit full of CRTs. And uh, I've got to do something about it. Over the past year, I have had this storage unit behind me and I'm uh, going to go ahead and start clearing this thing out. Yeah, so this thing is packed all the way up here with these two Trinity racks. Got that PVM up there, box of parts, CRTs, CRTs, CRTs. Wow, look, 2030 set right there, two of them. 14L5, big, huge Samsung consumer set. Yeah, whew. Some back breaking work here. You can tell I, I had these things pushed in here and there was not much room for anything else. We got a couple more outside. All right, check this fell out. Now, I did find this one on the side of the road about a year ago. It is the Samsung Slim Fit CRT. It's HDTV with the flat screen. This one accepts just about every input you want, even HDMI right in the back here. Got a nice set of PVM 2030s here that actually belong to me and they've not been restored and uh, just kind of my stock of personal items both these guys the bezels are unattached that's why I have the green painters tape on there check it out how about an e-machine an e-mac here remember these look at that thing on its side made in California and then we have a restored 1405 that does belong to a customer. All right, the rack over here, well, this first rack is pretty much cleared off except for this other monstrous Samsung CRT, which is filthy, but I'm even more excited about this one than the thin one. This is the Dyna Flat Pro. So it's another one I found on the side of the street and it's the only one left on there. And then I have this other rack still in here with 220s up top, that's a 1943, that's a 2030, four 8 inch PVMs right there, and then four more 20 inch ones. Even got the D20, got a very old BVM 1910, and a couple of restored, this is an Olympus 203 20M2U, and then this is what I'm gonna be loading in the vehicle here in a second this is an ikigami now that is what i call a load of crts look at that cute little black and white magnavox set there just a nice little friendly uhf vhf i tell you these bvms are about to break my back oh they're heavy each one of these BVMs is loaded with cards and heavy hardware and actually both of these are in really rough shape This one has over 150,000 hours and the tube is just shot and this one it needs every cap replaced in the entire CRT This is a parts 2030 and there's that 1943 all right, the only thing left in the storage unit is our Trinity rack and I found that the best way to take this apart and put it together is get a sledgehammer like this, rubber, mallet, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it out here to get it apart and then I'm going to flip it over and then I'm going to bang on those shelves till they come free one at a time and knock down and get them out of there and then I'll transport this rack and get it set up at the new shop. Alright, well as you can see behind me, this unit is empty now, look at that, empty. I can't believe how many CRTs I had in this. It was barely big enough for me to stand in. Five foot by five foot cube. It does have some high ceiling space, but still I am highly happy to move out of this thing. And let's go check out the new setup. Well, I warned you, I'm a CRT order. And I invited Cole to come over here and wander around as we look at the new setup all right so we're gonna take a closer look at this Samsung in a second but there's a couple CRTs on this cart which is more like a servicing cart and let's look over here 
And this is half of one of those Trinity racks. I reassembled it with the wheels on it this time so I would have a little bit more of a working mobile cart. You can see that right there. And that has a lot of strength to put these CRTs on it. And then over there is the other half of that rack assembled as a regular rack on the ground. And then these shelves are the super heavy duty. They can withstand thousands of pounds and they're solid. I've also got pieces of wood under each to stabilize it even more. And these will hold anything. The BVMs are down there. You see the heavy BVMs, heavy equipment. These are all CRTs that are getting serviced or that have been serviced. The top shelf is ones that have been serviced. So that holds all that and then actually behind it is another established rack exactly the same way so you can stack them really high on these racks so i've got a bunch of stuff up there this is all stuff in the collection for the most part that um, needs to be worked on here's some more and you can assemble these shelves in any way you want, kind of the same way as the other racks. They just, I mean, that's not moving. And they can hold all this weight. So there you go. BVMs again on the lower racks down there. And then here's the big rack that was inside the unit. You can see all the CRTs up here. You can stack them high on this too. You don't want to get it too overweighted, but was able to fit that Samsung up there and it's the exact same width as the two racks behind it so it fits nicely and makes a nice aisle right here uh, so placed a bungee here to make sure that this doesn't actually move if there ever was some kind of issue I don't want that to really shake or anything because there's CRT stacked all the way up there to the lift master how about that so that is what I've done with the racks and that is a lot of CRTs. All right, let's check out this DynaFlat Pro for a second and see what it's got going on. There we go. We have an image. What do you think, Cole? Oh yeah, this is a big one. And 2003, 27-inch TXN2745FP. This one actually has two component video inputs. All right, so we're going to need to do some more research on that Samsung DynaFlat television in the future. And we'll also check out that uh, UltraFlat CRT that they made too that does the HDMI input. But the next video, guys, is going to be about this one, another flat screen. It's the Toshiba 14A F44, and we're going to do the RGB MUX mod to it. That's right, Sector Sunthar has the RGB MUX kit available for this CRT and it's a pretty straightforward and simple installation uh, compared to some of the others. So I'm really excited to show you a whole video on restoring this, taking a look around the inside, and then again, adding the RGB MUX kit. And we can see how that compares to say the component video that's already built into the set. I wanna see if there's actually a chance the image quality improves because I believe 
it could if the component video is doing some kind of processing, some kind of video voodoo that we don't like on top of it, then going straight through RGB SCART and uh, sending that raw signal in will get rid of some of that uh, interference. So I'm excited. Make sure you're ready for that episode. And I want to say a special thank you to everybody out there who supports and watches this channel, especially on Patreon and anybody who ever sends their CRT in here to be serviced, modified, or restored. I really appreciate your business and your continued support of Retro Tech through Patreon. If you want more information on that, you can click on the link below.